This is the Ancient and Medieval History Lecture for Tuesday, June 7, 2022. And we have just seen several film clips, including Ring Out Your Dead, which deals with the commonness of death in the Black Death times, lots of death, and uh, from the Seventh Seal, a series of encounters between the knight and the Grim Reaper over a game of chess, where the knight is trying to trick death or get certain things accomplished uh, before he inevitably dies. And, of course, the Grim Reaper scene from another Monty Python movie called The Meaning of Life, where Mr. Grim comes about the reaping. And to me, the horrible thing is that the salmon moose killed everyone at dinner, but one of the people at dinner did not have the salmon moose, which is kind of disturbing, because then they shouldn't be dead. Must eat the chicken. <sighs> no. Okay. We personify that which we cannot control, because in personifying it, we bring it into relation with ourselves. Animistic paganism does the same thing. We can't grapple with the power of a storm, for example. So what we do is we make it into a person. Wants and uh, drives and needs, and, and we talk to it, we encounter it, we interact with it. Maybe we make sacrifices to it, which is an attempt to establish a quid pro quo relationship with the inevitable. I'll give you something if you give me something in return. That is a quid pro quo relationship. What we try to do, therefore, as human beings faced with a life that is so far beyond our understanding and our control, is we try to make sense of it with myths and we try to interact with it as if we can make a difference by playing tricks or playing games or being clever. The most famous example of this is the Faust legend from Europe where Faust makes a deal with the devil for wealth and power and fame, and he gets all of those things. The devil keeps his word, but when it comes time for Faust to give up his soul and have that soul go to hell, Faust then tries to weasel his way out of it. In a society where death is so common, it would be surprising if people didn't create a Grim Reaper character to deal with. Now, well, this is going to be funny. There are solutions that the Europeans come up with to the problem. First, they've got to identify the problem. So, one uh, answer to the problem is, we are sinful, and God is punishing us for our sins. So this begins the movement of the flagellants, or the flagellante in Spanish. The flagellants take whips, or boards, or something that will hurt, and they either in private or in public mortify their flesh. Whip, 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 like being scourged for committing a crime. And what this is supposed to do is appease an angry God by admitting our sin and punishing ourselves for it. Now there is a Greek play by Sophocles called Oedipus, which deals with this. You may remember from earlier in the year, Oedipus on a road meets a man, he fights the man, he kills the man. Turns out to be Laius, his father. He then goes to Thebes, finds the widowed queen Jocasta, and marries her. She turns out to be his mom. Horror ensues. 
Thebes is cursed. And when Oedipus realizes his horror, the horror that has become his life, he carves out his own eyes. As if to mortify his own flesh and somehow atone for his own sin. But it's a useless gesture. Because the mortification of his flesh doesn't change anything, it just adds to his burdens. So the flagellants try to say, I'm sorry, God, I was wrong. I will punish myself so that maybe you will relent on punishing the world. The second answer, <laughs> and what is ironic about this is we just returned our textbooks. It's one of the few times I'm using a textbook. Is talked about in the opposed views section of your last chapter, which deals with the Black Death and reasons for it. And if I can find it, of course, I'm not using the table of contents because that would be just too easy. I guess I'm going to have to use the table of contents, though, if I don't find it. Aha! And I'm going to write here, page, page 302. I can remember that in the future. So, allow me to read. Causes of the Black Death, Contemporary Views. The Black Death was the most terrifying natural calamity of the Middle Ages and affected wide areas of Europe, North Africa, and Asia. People were often baffled by the plague, especially by its causes, and gave widely different explanations. The first section is taken from the preface to the Decameron by 14th century Italian writer Giovanni Boccaccio, Decameron. The other selections are from contemporary treatises, that's letters, that offered widely different explanations for the Great Plague. So first from the Decameron by Boccaccio. In the year of our Lord, 13 and 48, the deadly plague broke out in the great city of Florence, most beautiful of Italian cities. Whether through the operation of the heavenly bodies or because of our own iniquities, which the just wrath of God sought to correct, the plague had arisen in the east some years before, causing the death of countless human beings. It spread without stop, one place to another, until unfortunately it swept over the west. Neither knowledge nor human foresight availed against it though the city was clean, uh, cleansed of much filth by chosen officers in charge and sick persons were forbidden to enter it, while advice was broadcast for the preservation of health. Nor did humble suppliant supplications serve. Not once, but many times, they were ordained in the form of processions and other ways for the propitiation of God by the faithful. But in spite of everything, towards the spring of that year, the plague began to show its ravages. So in the Decameron, like with the flashlights, what people are doing is they're taking the reason for all of this horror and taking the blame for it. And they're saying, God is punishing us for being lousy sinners. And so what we're going to do... Let's kick him out is we are going to punish ourselves and try to propitiate God with a bunch of apologies. That's what we're going to do. I guess that will do. So, it didn't work. Not in Florence, anyway. Second possibility. On earthquakes as the cause of plagues. There is a fourth episode, I'm sorry, a fourth opinion, which I consider more likely than the others. This is not from the Decameron. 
which is that insofar as the mortality arose from natural causes, its immediate cause was a corrupt and poisonous earthly exhaustion, which infected the air in various parts of the world. And when breathed in by people, suffocated them and suddenly snuffed them out. It is a matter of scientific fact that earthquakes are caused by the exhalation of fumes enclosed in the bowels of the earth. When the fumes batter against the sides of the earth and cannot get out, the earth is shaken and moves. I say that it is the vapor and corrupted air which has been vented or, so to speak, purged in the earthquake which caused, which occurred on St. Paul's Day in 1347, along with the corrupted air vented in other earthquakes and eruptions, which has infected the air above the earth and killed people in various parts of the world. And I can bring various reasons in support of this conclusion. It's an interesting choice. It's not so much our sin that's brought this upon us. It's the natural processes of the earth. So this guy assumes that earthquakes are a result of the emission of gas. And sometimes, in fact, when an earthquake occurs, or a volcanic eruption or whatever, there is an emission of gas. That's very much a part of it. Now, I don't know of this happening in Europe, but it's entirely possible that it did. I know of it happening in Africa. You've got these volcanic lakes You've got a lake, it's actually the vent of a not extinct volcano. And the lake burps, a giant bubble of gas. That gas being heavier than air goes down the mountainside to a village at the base and wipes it out. That's happened more than once in Africa. So, if people are killed by poison gas, maybe it's the earthquakes that are causing this pestilence. However, there's another possibility, and this one is going to seem far more familiar to you. <coughs> this is from Herman Gigas on well poisoning, poisoning of water. In 13 and 47, there was such a great pestilence and mortality throughout almost the whole world that in the opinion of well-informed men, scarcely a tenth of mankind survived. This is an overestimation of the death toll, but in some areas it was 90% fatality. Some say that it was brought about by the corruption of the air. Others that the Jews planned to wipe out all the Christians with poison and had poisoned wells and springs everywhere. And many Jews confessed as much under torture. That they had bred spiders and toads in pots and pans and had obtained poisons from overseas and that not every Jew knew about this wickedness, only the more powerful ones, so that it would not be betrayed. As evidence of this heinous crime, men say that the bags full of poison were found in many wells and springs, and as a result in cities, towns, and villages throughout Germany, and in fields and woods too, Almost all the wells and springs have been blocked up or built over so that no one can drink from them or use the water for cooking. And men have to use rain or river water instead. God, the Lord of vengeance, has not suffered the malice of the Jews to go unpunished. Throughout Germany, in all but a few places, they were burnt for fear of that punishment, many Jews accepted baptism and their lives were spared. This action was taken against the Jews in 13 and 49, 
and it still continues unabated for in a number of religious religions, I'm sorry, in a number of regions, many people, noble and humble alike, have laid plans against them and their defenders, which they will never abandon until the whole Jewish race has been destroyed. So leave it to Europeans to bring anti-Semitism into it. Great job. But that's not all. Because, what if it's not the Jews? Could it be Satan? And who consorts with Satan? Yes. Evil witches. Don't get ahead of me. Evil witches. Chickens. Evil witches, Dan. Everyone knows this. So were not only were pogroms unleashed against Jewish people, where Jews were burned at the stake, where Jews were tortured by the authorities until they admitted whatever the authorities wanted, only to stop the torture. This is what's wrong with using torture to extract information from people. Once you break a person, you don't get reliable information. They're desperately trying to tell you what you want to hear so that they'll stop you'll stop torturing them. But it's also witch women and men called warlocks. And these witch women are found out because they do herbal remedies or because they're somewhat daft or insane. Uh, maybe they're midwives, uh, they're wise of the ways of magic. And these witch women are put on trial for their lives and then burned at the stake. But that's not all, George, because witches are often gifted with familiar creatures. A familiar animal is a demon in human form given by the devil to the witch to assist her in her evil. And the typical form that these familiars take is that of a cat, especially a black cat. So, in response to the Black Death, Europeans not only whip themselves or have prayerful processions apologizing to God for their sins or blame the earth, they burn Jews en masse, they hunt witches en masse, and they kill cats. The only animal that could possibly give Europeans relief from the rats and other rodents that carry the plague in the first place. You can't make this stuff up. Indeed, rats carry the pests that carry the plague. Cats kill the rats that carry the pests that carry the plague. Europeans kill the cats that otherwise would kill the rats, that would kill the pests that carry the plague. Uh-huh. Oh, God. So, one-third to two-thirds of every person in Europe dies. Now, the cultural effects we've talked about, the personification of the Grim Reaper, the darkening of art, songs like Ring Around the Rosy, and other things that deal with death become much more common in European expression, art, music, plays, and so forth, because that's what people are talking about. It's like how many things over the last few years have dealt with how we've felt COVID, the masks, the shutdowns, and all the rest. I try not to watch stuff like that because I find it depressing because I don't like how we responded to COVID, but a lot of people got involved uh, in making art about it, stories, music, and so forth. However, on the economic side of things, a bunch of people who owned property are now dead. Property is still there. A bunch of people who had wealth are now dead. The gold and silver and jewels and art objects are still there. So, 
there is, to an extent, a redistribution of wealth that allows a bunch of people who had up until now been dirt poor to get a hold of land or property that they might not otherwise get a hold of because dead people have no use for wealth. That's going to stimulate the economy, but we're not done. Before the Black Death, there was an oversupply of labor. Population of Europe had gotten larger and larger. The gold supply had remained stagnant since Roman times. And so you have more and more people. They're not all needed. So it is uh, up to the person hiring labor to decide whether they want you or not. And, and labor, the price of labor went down. This, this, is, this is one of the things that would happen if we just allow immigrants to come here illegally. Your labor, unless you have a very particular skill, your labor has a certain value based on supply and demand. If suddenly there's an increase in the supply of unskilled workers, which the illegal aliens often are, unskilled workers, the value of your personal labor will go down. Your pay will go down. But now we have a shortage of labor. So many people have died that those people who are left, especially those people who have skills are now really in demand. Even peasants who come with the land or serfs who come with the land, even they can vote with their feet. If the Lord that they've lived with all their lives or his family or whoever has taken over after the death of the Lord and his family don't treat you right, boop, 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 boop. bye bye and go somewhere where they'll treat you well. So suddenly, since the supply of labor is down, the demand for labor is up, and the value of labor is up, and people can get better pay. So with the combination, in the immediate aftermath of the Black Death, of increased wealth in the hands of the survivors, and increased wealth in the hands of people who are working for a living. Suddenly there's increased wealth to do things, like invest in buying silks and spices, like invest in businesses. When you are starting a fire in a campground with charcoal or with wood, some people like to douse it with lighter fluid. Now, what you shouldn't do is have a fire going and then go splurt out of the bottle. You might get away with it a bunch of times by shooting out a little pulse of lighter fluid from the bottle. Here's the beginning and end of the pulse. goes on the fire. Looks really cool. The problem is if you have a steady stream that catches the fire, the fire will climb up the stream, blow up the lighter fluid, and burn you horribly. So yeah, that's so much better, Dan. It is. Okay, so when you have like this big bonfire, so yeah. you burn in a bunch of stuff, yeah. you take like lighter fluid, put it in a cup, and then you just pour or just the cup the whole okay. bottle. The key so, is, yeah, because exactly. there's no such thing as collateral damage, <laughs> shrapnel, or anything like that. Yeah. Well, what happened? Yeah, go ahead. My brother and I to play a game that was kind of like that, but it was, <laughs> it was like being on an electric fence. <laughs> yeah, that's smart, because that's what you want, that most sensitive part of the male anatomy, well, having electric like charge stream. shot up the stream of liquid into it. Like Are you daft? It's like playing chicken. Plus, yeah. All, no, the it's we like tested the, the electric all I can fence. say is, Nathan, that explains a lot of things about you. <laughs> That's, that's all. As my students are discussing the various ways to urinate upon an electric fence, all class in period one, all class, 
Um, what I will say is that the aftermaths of the Black Death, economically, were good! Because the survivors had more wealth, and this is going to spark the Renaissance and the voyages of discovery, like lighter fluid somehow applied to a campfire, which is where we're going to leave it for today. Now, we have class tomorrow and Thursday, and then you've got your final. Thank you for all bringing your books. I think, Adios. I think for the picnic thing, that it shouldn't be like an unexcused absence. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You still got it.